and um, get ready to kick us off. If um, Let me stop my screen share and then you two can start up your screen share since you're up first and we should be good to go. So welcome everyone while Susan and Foster are getting their screen share set up. Um, I am going to go ahead and just kind of give us the housekeeping items. Welcome. This is night two of the virtual spring rendezvous. This is the start of our route session. So we've got two sets of speakers today. Foster Shucker and Susan Wilson are going to start us on the Chesapeake. We'll take a short break and then we'll come back and they're actually going to pick up where they left off and take us to New York City. From there, Dave and Claudia Fuller will pick up in New York City and take us up to Waterford, which is where in most years, a pretty big route decision happens. Um, so without further delay, and I realized I had my camera off, which is fine because y'all don't need to see me. Um, if you have questions during the session, we prefer that you type them into the Q&A box as opposed to the <laughs> chat. The Q&A allows us to keep an eye on what we've already answered, what we haven't. It also gives us the ability, depending on the question, to sometimes answer those with typing while the speakers are still presenting. Um, we are recording these. Everything that we're doing at the Virtual Spring Rendezvous is being recorded with the exception of the uh, small groups, which we did Tuesday and we'll do again in a couple of weeks. Those are not recorded. Everything else is, including the Lunch and Learns. It does take us a little bit of time. We've got to do some editing sometimes on those videos and some processing of the videos. So we will get those to you just as soon as we can. And once they're ready, you will receive some links in your emails to the recordings. So I think that is all of the housekeeping things. I would like to introduce you to our first speakers for the evening. Foster Shucker and Susan Wilson are gold loopers whose home waters are the Chesapeake. They live on the upper Chesapeake and they um, are also former Harbor hosts of the year. So Foster and Susan, you are welcome to take it away when you're ready. And I mute, thanks Kim. Um, I'm Susan Wilson, obviously this is Foster Shucker. Uh, we started our first loop in 2014 and completed it in 2015 on our 45 foot bay liner, Quo Um And let's see, do we go to the next one yet? Sure. Okay, oh, there. So we're gonna talk about the Chesapeake Bay today. Um, and it's one of the most beautiful waterways you're gonna find on your trip. And as we go through this, let me first off and go, this isn't your regular looper briefing with, you know, turn left at this mile marker and stuff. This is more of a, an adventure. This is why you wanna spend all summer in the Bay. And for a lot of you who wanna to go to Canada this year and can't get to Canada, you should plan on spending the entire time in the day. So the Bay's got a huge history of back by um, Captain John Smith in the 1600s to, to find it. It's 200 miles long. It's pretty fast across the Virginia piece of it, but it narrows down to the Kent Island area where the Chesapeake Bay Bridge is. There's 5,000 miles of you know shoreline of water, which is awesome. And there's over 10 rivers that feed into the Bay. So there's a lot happening in here. All right. So most of you guys know me from the forum as being the weather guru. So I'm going to get the weather stuff out of the way first. So as we just saw back to previous picture, the Chesapeake Bay runs north and south. And when the winds come from the north, it's a long fetch. And the waves end up being pretty big when it gets to the south. And when the southern waves, the southern winds blow up the bay, it can get pretty ugly up in the, the northern part of there. In most cases, you want to be pushed up by the south wind to have it behind your stern on your way up. Um, but having said all that, the weather comes from the east and it comes from the west. And it can come across pretty quickly. So it's, it's an exciting sort of area to be from. And one of the things you should be aware of is that when the winds come from the west, they can bounce off the Atlantic and they can come back to you and stall over the bay. So there's a lot going on there. So rivers feed into the Chesapeake. So there's more than just the tide. While we all talk about the tide, there's a ton of current. For example, the Susquehanna River comes down from the dam in the north and it's got a pretty serious current to it. Likewise, the Potomac River in the south has got a pretty serious current to it and it can swirl you around more than you'd like to think. This is good stuff. Um, because it's 200 miles, the weather system is vastly different 
from the north to the southern parts of the bay. So you kind of need to keep track of that. And we're gonna talk about where the, the maps are to do this. There's a thing called the Chesapeake Bay Operational Forecast System or CBOS that we use to, to track the weather in there. And there are links to the, the website in the back of the, the guide, so don't worry about it. All right, so the easy thing is winds with the current and your course is fun, but winds against the current against your course, it's splash. So if we're heading north and the currents are coming from the north and the winds coming from the north, it's gonna be very choppy and it's gonna bounce you around and you're not gonna be happy with me. And while I always say there's a never, a never a terrible day on the Chesapeake Bay, you can get bounced around pretty good. <clears throat> so the deal is winds over 15 knots can be a little sporty. So let's try to like not do heavy winds like that and, and sort of, you know, dial it back a lot. And then when you're gonna be out on the bigger parts of the Virginia piece and the Maryland piece, the waves will get really big and you're not going to be happy out there. <clears throat> All right. So NOAA, because of the, the area, publishes all of these forecasts. So there's eight bay forecast cycles and eight rivers. And if you look at this little quick map here, this is the delineation mark of where the, the NOAA weather things are coming from. So kind of look at them and learn them. Everything. Stick them in your in your notebook of things to do so you know what part of the weather. Having an idea what the weather does in the northern part of the bay doesn't really help you in the southern part of the bay. That's interesting. <coughs> I'm sorry about just coughing in. So the Chesapeake Bay is very much tidal in there. So we have to treat it as a tidal water. And because it's so long, the tide rolls up and rolls down the bay. So when there's low tide in the Virginia segment, there's a high tide in the middle part of the segment and low tide in the upper bay. So having, once again, knowing what the tide is in Chesapeake City doesn't help you when you're down in Concha. Okay. In the lower bay, there's not a lot of current but there's a lot of current in the middle and upper part of the bay because it's narrower, okay? Once again, tidal swing is a big deal, but now the wind starts playing a big thing. If you have north winds happening from the Baltimore area south, it's gonna blow the water out of the bay, which means you know, there's gonna be much, much lower tides. Uh, so hopefully all of you have been anchoring since Florida in tidal waters. So we, we hope to hear that, you know, and you have to remember that the tide changes. So the tide comes in, the tide goes out and you're gonna have to account for the swing for that. So you're gonna make a big circle or start using a stern anchor. So if you're anchoring out in the Chesapeake Bay, you need to have a stern anchor or plan to go for the swing. All right, so the good part is most of the Chesapeake Bay has a sandy bottom. There's more silt and muck and mud in the Northern Bay, okay? And the shallow areas can be weedy, but by and large, it's not like Canada. So if you're gonna hit the bottom, it's gonna be skamush, not rocks. All right, it doesn't? Yep. Um, so we've spent years on the Chesapeake Bay and there's a lot of other people that spend many years seeing the bay. Um, and that's why we don't do a super detailed briefing. We do give you some high points of what you want to see. And we don't want to hear that you've come by and only seen a couple places on your way through the Chesapeake somewhere else. Um, so we're going to go from <clears throat> south to north. And you can follow along on your tablet charts or if you have handouts, you can look at those. Yeah. So this is, this is the handout that we normally pass out for people and it's basically, you're gonna see through the south is Virginia Beach. And um, we can all now pretend mm -hmm. we're in, in Norfolk enjoying the rendezvous I because Kim set this up yeah. and we love Norfolk so much. Um, but if you watch, then we're gonna go up the bay between the yellow and blue numbers to get up there. The first set of groups though that we're gonna do is the first seven from Virginia Beach up through there. So that's kind of a place to start. 
Let me go to the next. Okay, so starting out in Norfolk, where we should be at our rendezvous, um, there's lots of great restaurants and brew pubs there. One of our favorite places to visit is the Chrysler Gas Museum and Studio, where you can actually take uh, classes on glass blowing or lamp work. Um, there's also a Naval View Museum, and the USS Wisconsin is available for tours. Um, and then there's an Art Deco movie theater in Norfolk called the Commodore. And, and we've organized food tours of the, the great brew pubs downtown on a couple different years. So that's a great place to go. You get a chance to stop in there and do that. Where? All right. Um, let's see. Is that the cruise port? Yeah. Okay, so on your left is the cruise port, and on the right is the um, the shipyard where the Davy boats are repaired and refurbished. Let's see. Um, that's leaving Norfolk. Um, I can't remember what you call that. That thing on the left there. It's kind of a ruin. Yeah, uh, so it's a ruin and a good container ship and a buoy. Naval boat going out to sea, and then there's a lighthouse on the bottom. So just a reminder that Norfolk is very busy um, Navy port, and the Navy doesn't like you next to their boats. Yes. So if you stay away from them, that would be a good thing. Otherwise, they'll come and shoot you off with guns. <laughs> but you will see Navy boats underway while you're there. What's the name of the lighthouse? I don't remember. Okay. So many lighthouses. Okay, on the way out, you're gonna uh, have an opportunity to go by the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which we actually did so we could go into the, the Atlantic briefly when we bought our boat for the first time. So you could actually go under and over the longest span on the East Coast. It's 23 miles long and there are two tunnels that are 40 feet deep. <laughs> Why do you have to watch for submarines? Do they really go through there? Yes, the submarines go underneath. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the submarines okay. underneath of you. But you've got plenty of bridge clearance, so, sh so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, it's your exit point to go directly to Cape May uh, or Ocean City, Maryland, but you'll miss out on a lot of the bay. Um, and, um, you know, we prefer it if you go up through the northern part. Exactly. <laughs> that way you get to see us, too. Um, it's 27 miles from Norfolk and 40 miles to Deltaville. So this was, this was one of his, my... Um bucket list things to do was actually to go through the Bay Bridge Tunnel. Susan and I have driven over it a couple dozen times, but I really wanted a chance to go over and under it, so we did that. Uh, so Cape Charles Aranacock is on E2, so now we're looking at the east side of the Chesapeake, and it's the closest location after the Bay Bridge Tunnel. It's right after the end of it there. Uh, it's, it's becoming a huge place to go for the summer. The, there's marinas there, there's restaurants, there's shops, there's a food line, there's just a ton of stuff to go see and do. There's great so, beaches there too. Oh, beaches there, yes. Yeah. So it's becoming a, a huge destination point Air to go boats. do that. Bales. Okay. Um, okay, Cape Charles Yacht Center. Oh yes, so there's several hundred feet of transient dock face, which is newly added in 2018 in Cape Charles. So you'll have plenty of places to stay. Um, you can rent a golf cart there. Um, there's a farmer's market, um, a museum. And then if you go on 40 miles north of Cape Charles, uh, you can go to, you pronounce it? Wallace Island. Okay. It's the Wallace Island Flight Facility Visitor Center. And so with all of the new space launches that's been going on, this has become SpaceX's northern home. So there's a quite a good chance because you're launching the satellite clusters out of there. There's a launch every three or four weeks that you can be part of. Um, and we always <clears throat> encourage people, if you can, to uh, rent a car so you can visit some nearby uh, things in the area where, whenever you're uh, someplace where you can access a rental car. Um, so one of those would be a side trip to the uh, NASA Center, which is about a 35-minute car ride away. 
Um, there's also a harbor host in the area in Cape Charles, Anthony Sayo. So do get in touch with him if you're going to be staying in that area. Sure. And once again, a plug for all the harbor hosts in the area. I may have forgotten or missed some of you guys. So if you can send me a note, I'll update this. But the harbor hosts are the, the best parts of this. Okay, the James River. Um, Jamestown was founded in 1607, which is earlier than Williamsburg, which was founded in 1632. So it's the er one of the earliest settlements in Virginia. Um, you can get a marina close to Jamestown if you want to drive to Williamsburg or go to the Bush Gardens Amusement Park. Um, and there are other, are other marinas available at the mouth of the York River. But the James River is really known for its scenery. Um, it's ab absolutely beautiful um, and lots of good picture taking opportunities there, as well as um, it's a good opportunity to, to ride in your dink and see a little bit closer, you know, closer up views of some of the things you're going towards. Oh, Deltaville. Yeah. So Deltaville is one of the most popular destinations yeah. for loopers Deltaville. because of Zimmerman's Marina. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, if you need right. work done, they are the guys to come do it. They do major minor repairs. A lot of people have limped through from South Carolina, North Carolina to get to Zimmerman's to do some work there. So also is Dozer's Marina, which is a very popular place to go. So it's, it's good. But this is going to be most of your first stop. It's about 50 miles from Norfolk to Deltaville. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good day run in the daylight for early in May, especially with all the, the marine, Navy traffic, and Hampton Roads. Okay. Next is Tangier Island, which is really famous. It's one of the earliest fishing and crabbing villages in the U.S. Um, and it is really teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, there is a daily ferry service, and I don't think you can actually uh, uh, find space to dock there now. You have to take the ferry. Is that right? No, this is the, they have dock space they, now. They still have. They dock still have dock, but this okay. is probably the last year we'll be able to do that. Yeah. So the island <clears throat> is disappearing. Um, it's it's because the waters are rising and the shore is eroding. Um, the island isn't going to be there forever. So while you may be able to dock there this year you may not have that ability and next and year. Um, and, you know, if you wait too long, think. you may not have a chance to see it at all. Exactly. So, you notice the last one was in, in sort of C5 and Smith Island's also C6. So now we're coming up the middle part of the bay to do this. So this is, Smith Island is actually the border between Maryland and Virginia. Uh, it's also an early fishing villages from the 1700s, approximately 250 people live there. And the delicacy on the upper right corner is the fabulous Smith Island Tangier cake, Island. which many of you <laughs> had before, and it's well worth the stop to get there. Uh, we like it because it's, it's again, you know, one of the last out outposts of Maryland fishing that's finest. Uh, and then we get to Crisfield, which is the crab and oyster capital of Maryland. So it's kind of like being in Apalachicola, but better. better. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the restaurants serve crabs and oysters. Um, we don't mention the McDonald's. I'm not sure how that got in there. But from uh, Crisfield, you can do a day, treat, day trip to Chincoteague. Um, and that a lot of you will know from your childhood uh, uh, book, Misty of Chincoteague, where they swim the wild ponies. Um, and Misty is actually a wild pony uh, in that book. It's on the Eastern shore of Maryland. So it's pretty close to get to um, Baltimore airport. If you need to travel out to get somewhere get to home or three hours to Philadelphia airport. And this is really the first location you've had a chance of other than Norfolk to be able to fly out on a commercial airline. So if you need something, this is the place to go. All right, so our next group here is this peach. It's sort of in the, the lower middle part of the bay. Uh, if you look clear up at the top at number 17, that's actually the Bay Bridge that comes across from Annapolis. And this middle part of the bay is, is one of our favorites to, to go through. Okay, the Potomac. Um, the Potomac River is a really great 
side trip, mother. technically you do not have to do that um, as on your way up the bay. Um, but we really love the, our trip up the Potomac. It's a beautiful river. Um, there's lots of old uh, fishing villages um, and sites of interest there. And then at the end of the Potomac, of course, you can get to Washington, D.C. and see D.C. by water. Wow, um, so our first stop there was St. Yeah. Mary's City, which is the oldest settlement in Maryland. Um, it's a restored uh, uh, settler village. Um, so it's a living museum, um, and I believe they do uh, some presentations with docents at times. Uh, when we were there, they didn't happen to have one. Um, you can either anchor in the basin, which is very calm, or uh, you can tie up uh, in St. Mary's to visit the town, but you cannot tie up overnight. Okay, so it's just a day trip. And it's another jumping off point to go up to Washington. Where do you and then in this slide deck, so we're going to stop and we go down the Delaware Bay, but the slides after that talk about going to Philadelphia and talk about going to Washington, D.C. So you've got that whole experience here if you're just going to cruise through it. So the Patuxent River, the okay. Solomons, is a beautiful place. It's one of the most popular oh, yeah. looper right. destinations in this area here. There's awesome marinas. Um, you have to visit the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. The Patuxent Air Station has got daily flights of naval aircraft in and out of there. So if you're a fly guy, it's a great thing to see. It's about 55 miles from Deltaville. So now we've gone Norfolk 50 miles, Deltaville to here 50 miles. So now we're just kind of like, you know, blipping up the bay here to do this. Your harbor host there is Doug Smith. He's a great guy. Give him a call and he can help you out with getting food or whatever else you need in that area. You can do this. So the Chop Tank River, I actually grew up on the Chop Tank River up near Denton. And the bottom piece of that is in Cambridge. And Cambridge is one of the most, you know, preferred stop for loopers that need electronics. So there's Minstrel Electronics is there. Um, there's a Maritime Museum there. There's a ton of marketplace things, one of the largest, um, food bazaars is on that area. You know, it's really, it's pretty cool. And then if you take the 35 miles up to Denton, when you get to marker 77, turn and look to the right and wave at my, my boyhood house to do that. <laughs> this is also a good point if you decide you want to do an Atlantic Shore beach trip to stop in here, or rent a car, and it's only an hour to Ocean City, Maryland. Okay. One of the things that people like to do is Track Creek is close by, and it's an awesome place to go kayak. That's on the other side. Though. Yeah, that's what he said. Right. Yeah, so up past see. Chop Tank River, just north of that, is Oxford. And this is a, a big destination point for people on the bay to go for the summer. So it's a great food, great beaches. It's an awesome place to go. This is kind of an overview of the marina inside of Oxford. So there's a ton of slips in there. You want to spend a couple dollars and ride on the Oxford Belfry Ferry and kayak in the Trent Avon River. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, really awesome. And to be honest, people, the water really is that blue. It's also an artist community. So there may be an art show or something to visit, um, you know, regarding art that was made locally, if you're there. And then Tillman Island, another historic Maryland fishing town. Um, Tillman is one of my favorites. Um, there are resort hotels, um, maritime or marine museum, great restaurants, but my favorite there is the biking because it's very flat and the island is very quiet. There's not a lot of traffic. So you can bike just about anywhere on the island. Um, it is pretty calm and peaceful. The, the most, uh, uh, kind of nerve-wracking piece of it is going over that drawbridge um, with the the cars whizzing by, uh, which is kind of the only way to get past that uh, piece over to the other side. Um, but there's also good kayaking in the marshes. So this is uh, coming up to that drawbridge um, I was just mentioning. Uh, we walked over it because um, while it's really quiet everywhere else, that's kind of the, the bottleneck. So all of the cars pass through that drawbridge. 
And down at the bottom, uh, the bottom two are uh, the old uh, style Maryland fish boats. What are those called? Skipjacks. Skipjacks. There's a, a little skipjack museum with some information hmm. um, that you can kind of see the boats in their natural environment uh, <clears throat> docked to the, uh, next to the um, plaques that explain how they were used and what particular style of boat they are. There is, they are. So now we're in Deal. There's there's two marinas in Deal. There's Harrington Harbor North and South. Um, it's another 40 miles from Solomon. So now you've come up the bay 50, 50, and 40 to hit into here. So it's a great location to go. Um, I would like to recommend that you pack your blue blazer because this is an awesome summer wedding destination. And if you want to crash a wedding, this is the place to do it. <laughs> Oh, the Eastern Bay, St. Michael's. Um, a lot of people to go to St. Michael's, uh, not just by boat. Um, it's a really fun destination. It's a historic town. It's kind of a little resort town. So there's lots to see and do as you're walking through the town. There's lots of little shops. There's lots of great restaurants. Um, there's a museum that uh, is located in an yeah. old um, lighthouse. Um, and also there, uh, a museum where they rebuild um, some of the skipjacks uh, using traditional methods. And you can see that at the bottom right. So St. Michael's is one of, you know, everyone's favorite places to go in the yeah. summer. So on the Eastern shore is the Eastern Bay or the Great Eastern Bay it's called in the Y River. So if you're an anchor fan, this is the place to go. There's a ton of anchorages to go out there. There's, yeah, it's calm in most weather because it's a big circle. So it's protected north and south. Uh, it's a great kayaking place. Uh, there's in the middle of it is Y Island and you can dink around that. Um, there's a 10 foot bridge that you have to duck under but most of you can be able to do that without any problem. 10 feet, yeah. Oh, the Eastern Bay, Kent Island. Um, we like to go here for uh, an annual boat show, um, and we always eat at Annie's. They have the most amazing cream of crab soup there, um, but they have a lot of other places to eat. There are a lot of uh, marinas there, lots of restaurants, again, a museum, tiki <clears throat> bars, and you can go kayaking. Um, it gets a little marshy in there, so it's a good place to go, you know, kind of explore a little. Are we going to bring a kayak? We'll have something. So now this brings us to the Severn River and Annapolis. So this is probably one of your must-do stops. It's on the western shore. Uh, it's an it's the state capital of Maryland. There's a the U.S. Naval Academy is there. There's a guided tour that is just now starting up again. So post-COVID, you can go actually do that. Uh, Eagle Alley at the city dock is where the really big boats, the really fancy boats hang out in. Uh, there's a ton of places to go. Our harbor host is Dave there. This is now your next best place for BWI Airport to be able to get to, you know, out and fly around again. Uh, there's also a daily bus to uh, Washington, D.C. or to Baltimore. So if you want to tour them, this is a way to go do that. So it's, it's, a, it's a great location. Um, this is one of the few locations we recommend spending a day or two at that because there's so much to see and so much yeah. to do. So there's a ton of stuff to do. This is Foster and Susan on segways riding around. This is the center part of town to go do that. Okay. And then once you dive underneath the out of Annapolis, the next thing you're running to is the Bay Bridge. So this was built in 1952. It's four and a half miles. And then they built the second span in 1973. Uh, about 75,000 people cross this bridge every weekend. Just south of this is a big anchorage area. So you're going to see a ton of container ships sort of stacked up there that you need to, to give a wide berth to. The thing you want to do is you want to cross in the main channel. It's unlikely that you'll find a, a cruiser coming down in that, but off of the main channel is about a thousand fish boats mm -hmm. and you don't want to be out there because they're, they're hovering around the smaller piers. 
You also don't want to pause underneath the bridge span. They do patrol there um, because, you know, they want to make sure that there's no terrorist activity or anything like that. So, you know, just make sure as you're going through, go straight through and don't stop around any of the piers or underneath the bridge. All right, so now this is the upper half of the bay and this is where we live. So you can see at the bottom left-hand corner is the, you know, Route 5301 bridge in Annapolis. So that's the Bay Bridge we just talked about it. And then we're up in the far right-hand corner at stop number 30. So this is the, the last piece of your bridge tour. I mean, your, your Bay tour. Bay tour. Sorry. Go ahead. So the Chester River is next. So when you get to Kent Island, you can stay in Kent Island and you have a choice. You can either go out to well, we just the, the port with, side and get into the bay again, or you can follow the right-hand side of the starboard side into Chestertown. Uh, there are There's just so many places to anchor out in. It's just an anchorage everywhere you want to go. So if you're a bird watcher and you like kayaking and you like anchoring out, this is your area you want to be. You want to be on the Chester River. Oh, Rock Hall, another one of our favorite places. It's pretty close to us, so that's some place we've been more often, uh, both by boat and by car. Um, it's an old crabbing and fishing town. They have an annual event called uh, the Pirates and Wenches Fantasy Weekend. It's impossible to get a dock space there on that weekend. You have to reserve that a year in advance. So don't try and boat there for that weekend, but if you can't attend, try and attend by uh, car because they do a great storming of the beach, which you can see in the bottom right corner um, where all the pirates and wenches storm the beach to, uh, to take over the town. And then Baltimore. Baltimore is also one of our favorite places to visit. Um, it's got a lot to see on your way in. Um, there's a picture there of the Domino Sugar Factory. It's an iconic uh, uh, sign uh, and view as you're coming in. You also pass Fort McHenry on the way inside. Um, once you're there, um, there's lots of uh, dockage around Baltimore Harbor. Uh, so pick one that's gonna be convenient to what you wanna see the most but you do have water taxis available as well as regular taxis and Ubers uh, in Baltimore proper. Um, the Inner Harbor has a warship to visit, a submarine, aquarium, science center. There's lots of shopping, tons of restaurants, really great restaurants. Within walking distance is the uh, Oriole, Orioles at Camden Yards if you wanna see a baseball uh, game. Um, there's tons of stuff to do within walking distance. And if you're in the harbor proper um, and it's close to a weekend or across a weekend, you are going to hear concerts because they do concerts on the water and it travels across the water. Um, and there are um, sometimes fireworks there aside from July 4th. So that's also a fun weekend trip is when they're planning a fireworks display. But I do caution you that July 4th is not a great time to go there. It's almost impossible to get uh, dockage there for uh, 4th of July weekend um, when they're having their big fireworks <clears throat> show. You can also take the train from Baltimore to uh, Washington, uh, or you can take a bus. Um, you can get to Annapolis, uh, and you can also get to um, Baltimore Airport from yeah. there. So some pictures of Baltimore, the Inner Harbor, um, the Dragon Boats, people can rent on, on the harbor, uh, as well as a pirate ship. Um, on the right is the dock that we stayed at uh, probably about four or five years ago. Um, and you can see the, the, the skyline view from there. Um, and then on the left, you can see the Hard Rock Cafe and the aquarium. Uh, also very near to where we stayed. So right next door to Baltimore is Fells Point. So this is another great place to go hanging out. The You can anchor in Fells Point or you can anchor at Baltimore and kind of walk the distance, but it's it's an awesome place to go. 
there's a maritime park and museum there. There's a ton of food and drink places. Uh, if you're going to go to Fells Point, you're drinking beer and eating crafts. Yep. There's just a ton of places like that. You there's a, a farmer's mm -hmm. market that's now back Eating in crabs. business mm -hmm. um, for every Saturday. And there's a Sunday antique market every other Sunday to, to you know, that they've opened up. So COVID has kind of closed Baltimore down, but it's now starting to open back up again. So there's things to do there. So the Middle River is the next mm -hmm. river up past the Baltimore area. Um, it's, there's there. good anchorages in there. It, but it's a popular place with the Chesapeake Bay people to go. There's an island there called Park Miller Island that was created out of the, the spoils of dredging and also the garbage to do that. And it is the number one place for people to go to in the summertime. So if you're going to be there, you know, Monday through Thursday, it's an awesome place to be. Saturday afternoon, it's going to be full of rock music and people running around and all that kind of nonsense to do that, but it's it's a good place to go see. Wharton Creek, um, also very sheltered place uh, with you can where there's good anchorages. Um, you do have a full service marina though, and it's more like a resort. So if, if you like pools, there's a pool and there's also a golf course. So Still Pond is one of our favorite places to go hang out and one of the advantages that you guys have had listening to this is we've, we've coughed up a couple of our great places to go. So Still Pond is very well sheltered from the south, the east, and the north. And if you go behind the Coast Guard facility up Still Pond Creek, it's completely hidden away and it's an awesome place to go. If you have a boat that's probably less than 35 feet, you're going to sneak in there with no problems at all. Our 45 foot bay liner, it's kind of a touch and go situation, but it's it's a great place to go and hang out. And then Lloyd's Creek uh, at the mouth of the Sassafras on the southern shore, it's also a secluded anchorage for smaller boats. So you can't go too, too far in, but watch out for the parties on the weekends. Yes. Um, it gets a little wild with the, uh, the sea dews up there. The kids get a little crazy. So the Sassafras River is your next stop up, and we're kind of winding our way through the northern part of the bay. Uh, the Sassafras River is very long. It's around. a great tour to take, go down. Yeah, At the yeah. far end of it is Georgetown, Fredericktown. At the head end of it, which has got a couple great restaurants, um, some marinas, you know, ice creams to die for. You know, it's an awesome ice cream place. So it's a place to go. If you're looking for a day long trip to go down, another day to come back up, it's a great place to go visit. Oh, and Aberdeen Proving Grounds. Um, so that's an army ordinance range. It's very well marked and you do absolutely have to keep out. It's patrolled. Um, they will, if you're, you know, kind of loitering nearby, they will come out and check you out and figure out what's going on with you. So, you know, just continue to move on by, uh, you know, in your well-marked uh, area. The Susquehanna River is on the western side. And now this is the major tributary coming out of Pennsylvania. There's the West Susquehanna and the East Susquehanna, and it comes down to a, a bridge and a, um, a dam at Conowingo there. So it's it's a pretty amazing river to go through. The City Run mm -hmm. Marine is awesome. They the have very cheap rates. <laughs> we love that. There's an antique store. There's a couple of maritime museums. There's ice cream when they're shopping. Um, if you have a sailboat, this is your last place to actually get serious sailboat work done. The sail yards there are well known on the, the upper bay for the quality work that they're doing. Uh, there's a casino a couple of minutes away that you can Uber to. And this is the most Northern spot on the Chesapeake. Um, they also have festivals there. So um, check if you're going to go there and stay at the Marina, check with the dock master to see if there's a festival going on when you're gonna be there um, because you could go to a seafood festival, an ice cream festival or something else. Yep, tons of stuff to do. Yeah. And Northeast. Um, Northeast is uh, 
a very small town that's kind of uh, out on a little, what do you call it? Peninsula. Peninsula, yeah. Um, it's, it's an older town. Um, there are some nice restaurants, um, but you'll have to kind of walk to get to them from where you can anchor. Um, but there's lots of area to anchor in there. Um, there's a fireworks show around the 4th of July that uh, you can anchor and watch and then stay overnight. We've done that many uh, times and it's a really good fireworks show. Um, and then Woody's Crabs, if you want crabs, is the best in the area. There's also uh, a place, a restaurant called the Naughty Goose, which is probably the closest you can get to from the anchorage that you could dink to. Um, and they serve a really great brunch yeah. on the weekend. So the other secret place we go to is the, on the Elk River, it's called Cabin John. It's a small, tiny cove that is butted up by some serious McMansions mm -hmm. there, but it's a great place to be on a Monday through Thursday location. Uh, we've, we've taken lots of people there and it's spent time and it's really, really nice. The, the weekends is the Pennsylvania Navy shows up with their ski -dos and there's lots of zooming around, but if you've got the midweek place to go, it's a very, very pretty site. That's also a good place if you're looking to um, do some bird watching. There's some eagle families that live there um, and uh, they're raising their babies so you can actually hear them uh, and see them on the shore because they'll fly down and um, hang out on the shore while they're picking apart whatever fish they, they caught. And then you come visit us. We're on the Bohemia River. So we're in Slip D25. We love our marina. Um, it's, there's fuel, there's pump outs, the mechanics are awesome. There's a pool, there's a little beach, there's free donuts on Sundays. There, through the, the summer, there's free events on Friday and Saturday nights where you can do mug painting or beer tasting or all sorts of stuff that's in there. Okay. And then just past us is an anchorage that's awesomely nice and it's a great place to go. So that's some place that Susan and I go out to a regular basis and hang out overnight. So, you know, love that area. There's a uh, kayaking and the fishing is just awesome the whole way through there. All right, so now we're gonna come out of the bay and across the C&D Canal. So this is your, your last like chance to visit me. And yeah. this is where you either make me super, super happy or super, super sad because you're going to come through the C and D and you're going to say, wow, Foster, you gave me 26 places to go see and we saw 22 of them. Or you're going to make me sad and go, oh yeah, we went to Deltaville and here and I'll be very sad. But what you want to do is you want to transit the canal on a rising tide. Mean. The current flows through here pretty quickly. Uh, we've seen Grand Banks actually make 11 knots. So it's a chance for you to see your, your boat really fly. Um, there's a no wake zone, actually, the Chesapeake City Bridge, which is what you're looking at here. Uh, Denrec, the natural resources people, does do patrol it. So you want to kind of keep it down to do that. And then you've got places on both sides. We like Schaefer's on the canal for great, you know, food choices. Mm -hmm. And there is a free town <coughs> dock um, at Chesapeake City with power. Um, so as long as you get there early enough, um, the, the dock is free. The power is an extra charge. Um, but it's pretty easy to get a slip there on the uh, weekday. Uh, on the weekend, it's uh, usually pretty busy. Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. Oh, I already said that. There you go. You okay. just settled it. You can also dock at the Chesapeake Inn. Um, that's definitely a party place. So if you're into party places, they have a tiki bar. And that's a lot of people's place to go to eat and drink and make merry. Uh, you can moor in the basement, in the basement. <laughs> you can moor in the basin. Um, and but again, that's there's limited space in there. So you know, during the weekday, it's probably no problem. You may have a problem on the weekend. Um, but there's lots of great little shops in Chesapeake City. There's an ice cream store right by the city dock. And you can walk around. There's several several restaurants to walk around in town to eat at, as well as Schaefer's that Foster mentioned across the uh, the canal and Chesapeake City on your side of the canal, if you're docking there or mooring. 
Um, there is a water taxi that will take you across to Schaefer's if you want to go eat there. Okay, so there's no drug or grocery stores mm -hmm. there, but we're your harbor host, so call us. We'll come get you and drag you up to one of the best farmer's markets in the area and other places that you need to go to get stocked up. So we're happy to do that. Just give us a call. Then Delaware City, which is going to be your uh, last stop in our area, uh, it's just north of the C and D Canal. It's a historic town, um, and there's a fort nearby that you can take a ferry ride to. Um, there's great fireworks uh, in July, not necessarily July 21st. We'll have to figure out the date because they don't do it on the 4th of J July. They do it after all of the other fourth fireworks displays have gone off and they uh, buy any unused displays, which is why they usually have the best fireworks around because they have fireworks from several different displays. Um, there's food, um, there's some shopping there, uh, but only a really small grocery. So don't expect to stock up there um, and a great ice cream uh, store there. And then there's, um, Woody's uh, Krabby Dicks. Krabby Dicks. Krabby Dicks. Okay. All right. So now the next thing is <clears throat> the Delaware Bay. So if you look at the mid middle part of the chart, that number there is actually Delaware City. You can travel north to Philadelphia. The information how to get to Philadelphia is in the next section. Um, and then south of us is the two points, the one a little, a little farther northern is Cape May and then Lewis, Delaware. So you really want to go down the bay when the winds are less than 15 knots. And you want to kind of watch the Delaware Bay operational forecast system for the weather. That's my, my go-to. Lots of people like windy and some other things. But the key thing is 15 miles an hour or less because the waves in this area will definitely stand up on you. They will not make you happy. And if you stay in Delaware City before going across the Delaware Bay, the owner, Tim, does a great briefing and he'll give you a go, no go, you know, if there's any kind of weather in the forecast. Yep. All right, so this is, this is my, my annual plea not to do this. Stay in the channel. Okay, there, there are actually walls coming down the Delaware Bay that in theory you can anchor behind. And I would like to, I would like to plead with you not to do that. Uh, those walls eat about six boats a year for thousands and thousands of dollars in fiberglass damage. Uh, we had our first boat get eaten uh, three days ago. So just give, give it a thought. You know, I, I know that frugal looping is on your mind. This isn't the place to save $100. You know, anchoring behind those walls just isn't going to be a great idea. Okay, so cruising the bay. Where would we go? What are we going to see? So on my must-see list and Susan's must-see list is you can pick between St. Michael's or Oxford. You have to see Annapolis. You need to go to Baltimore. Uh, you need to stop and visit us on the Bahamia River, Chesapeake City, and then Delaware City is your launching point to get out. But other itineraries, if you have more time, you, do agree. you know, because it's mm -hmm. 250 miles long, you have places to go. So you can do the minimal trip that lots of people do, which is Norfolk, Deltaville, Solomons, Annapolis, and then visiting us in Chesapeake City or Delaware City. And then you can sort of see the mid-range trip and then the longer range trip with some extra days in Annapolis and Baltimore to go off and do that. Like and then the best is that. just hit all the spots. <laughs> you know, we highly recommend that as a thing to do. Okay, so this is our harbor hosts and stuff that we're here. You know, give us a call. And I think Kim, we're kind of right on time. Yeah, we've got uh, time set aside for some questions and we have had some typed into the Q&A. So if you are set, I will go ahead and then start asking you those. Sure. We stop, um, stop sharing. First one, Ray is wondering, when might it be too early in the season to do the Chesapeake? Does it take a while for things to start opening up? So what really is the season on the Chesapeake? So the, the season really starts about the 15th of May. 
Um, everybody's out and about by Memorial Day. So that's the 30th, but there's lots happening now. All the all the marinas are up and running, all the things open and that kind of stuff. With COVID going on, the the things are a little slower to do that. But if he's coming through next summer, then he can rock and roll the first part of May. So I highly recommend that people come visit you in Norfolk on the first week in May and then Zoom North. Be a whole Absolutely. And just a reminder to everyone, if you have a question you'd like to ask verbally to Foster and Susan, you can raise your hand and I can unmute your audio and you can ask them directly. But in the meantime, um, next question we have is, um, can you recommend a good, safe, but not too expensive marina where you can leave your boat for a month in the summer and within Uber range to a decent airport? Hmm. Sure. So um, there's a couple different places to go. Baltimore may be your best bet. And there's a couple marinas in Baltimore and they're all equally good that have monthly rates to, to go, go and do that. And I would give you the best, the best choices for flights in and out. Okay. Thanks for that. We have a few hands up. So I'm going to go to John Marshall first. So John, you should be able to unmute yourself now and go ahead and ask your question. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to, I have an 18 foot flat boat. I wanted to run it to ocean city, Maryland from, I guess, Norfolk. Uh, you have any advice for me? Mm. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, really, you can't do it on the inside. I was wondering if I if I can cross. Maybe I could do it on the inside. Um, uh, now, so what happens is that there's really no inland waterway from Norfolk to Ocean City, Maryland. That piece that goes by Chincoteague and Assateague is silted in, so you're gonna you're gonna miss that. And then once you try to go north of Ocean City, Maryland, you get about three miles and there's a bridge with a, a five foot crossing on it. So you're not going to oh. go much more than that. But my end point is uh, Ocean City because we're, we're having a family reunion. I'm just going up there and then I'm coming back down to Miami. Um, so I'm not really trying to get any further than Ocean City. But um, it's, it looks it's, like there's, yeah, it's, I don't know. It, it, it's doable on an 18 footer. You need to pick your weather day, my friend. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I have the range, it's but coming uh, from Miami. Uh, the big thing will be crossing over, right? Because is that how far is it from Norfolk to the to the island there? The island. So from north from Norfolk, you're going to go out underneath the the bridge, and that's 20 miles. And then you're going to head north, <laughs> and you're going to go another. I want to say 45, 50 miles. How many? Another forty-five or fifty miles to get to Ocean City, Maryland. You have oh, some you have some bailout points in the Virginia coast there. Okay. Things go south on you. You can actually get into places, but that water is all very very shallow. <coughs> Shallow's okay. I only have a foot draft, so that's not a problem. Okay. Uh, but uh, okay, great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, let's go. I'm going to take another written question and then we'll go to the other hand that's up. Um, next question from Blair. Is the mouth of the Bohemia silted in badly? Last time we visited, it seemed very shallow. Which Blair is this? Is this Blair Buehler? It is Bla uh, Blair Buehler, yes. Oh, jeez, Blair. Give me a break, dude. <laughs> Just pick up some speed and fall through the mud. So <laughs> the, the, it, it is shallow there. It's about four and a half feet at low time. So a lot of people worry about that, but it's very soft, mucky mud. So it's easy to get into and easy to get out to. Uh, if you come in two hours before and two hours after high tide, you won't have a problem to go do that. But I think Blair's got that, that 65 foot boat with the nine foot chat, Is that right? Or did you send an email? Q &A? Q &A. Oh, okay. I don't think it's quite that deep. Um, let's go to Susan and then we'll go to Blair. Blair might let us know that. But for those of you who don't know Foster and Blair, uh, they are friends. <laughs> so um, th Blair, there's your answer. Hopefully that helps. If you have a follow up, just let us know. And let's go to um, Jeff. So, 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 Jeff has his hand up. So Jeff, uh, you should be able to unmute yeah. and go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, realistically, um, I both pull four and a half feet, and I, I don't have a problem getting in and out most of the tide cycle. Okay, great. And of course, you do have the, the tidal advantage. So if you do time it for, as you said, a couple hours before and after 
high tide, you're, you've got that advantage to it. So thank you for that. I mean, those are your, that's the river you're on. So you have the best local current knowledge of that. So we appreciate that info. Um, Joel, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, that kind of segues the, into my question was, um, how many areas there? I know uh, uh, we're learning about the tides and dealing with uh, two hours before and two hours after high tide to some areas, but how many areas, we have a boat similar to the size of yours um, with about a four foot draft. Yeah. So uh, what's that? Yeah. About four foot draft. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering how many areas uh, through that trip that you're talking about that we just went through uh, that we have to really worry about that. So the only, the only place that you have to worry about is still pond, which has got a shallow area, uh, the Cabin John Anchorage, and the Bohemia River. The rest of the stuff, you're gonna end up with more than seven feet of water. Thank you. And, and watch your depth gauge and follow the markers everywhere else, so. Okay, thanks, Joel. Um, another Thank one you. of our written questions. Um, what is the northernmost place on the Chesapeake to spend the winter on a boat without worrying about freezing? Oh, good question. Um, Colonial Beach, Virginia. So clear down, clear at the bottom on the Potomac. Once, okay. Once you get north of there, you have to you have to winterize. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we have another hand up, so let's go to uh, Michael Aljuski. Sorry if I butchered that, Michael, but go ahead. You can unmute and ask your question. Yeah, thank you. I was curious, you mentioned take the C&D Canal on a rising tide. Which which direction is the current on the rising tide in C&D, since it's open in both ends? Okay, so the rising tide is going from the top of the Chesapeake Bay into the Delaware Bay and up to Philadelphia. So if you're going up the bay towards Delaware City and rising tide, you're going to be going with the, with the tide, is that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that's where you pick up that speed. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. I never thought about saying which way it went. Okay. <laughs> and then just so just make sure we're going to talk about this in a couple of minutes. When we turn around and go to Cape May, you actually then want to do the falling tide or the lowering tide when you leave Delaware City. Right. Up the same current. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that, Foster and Susan. Um, next question. Approximately how many days are each of the itineraries on your last slide? So I'm, I'm not sure if you were recommending that each of those stops, you know, is a day or two days, or if you have any comments on how much there really is to see and do in those cities on that last slide. So they're, they're all a day. At least a day. And, and you may want to spend more time, for instance, in Annapolis and Baltimore, because it's a larger geographic area, there's more to see. Yeah. I mean, I could easily spend a weekend, a two day weekend in St. Michael's and not run out of stuff to see, I feel like. Um, Oxford, Probably a day. Um, it's a more rural place. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so I think it's really what you want. If you really feel like having a really quiet uh, weekend or, or a quiet couple of days where you're re really not doing uh, something, uh, going to one of the anchorages that we suggested where you can do some kayaking or dinking, then that's kind of up to you. How, how long do you want to spend doing that before you then kind of get back to the travel and maybe see something a little bit uh, faster. Yeah. Okay. And that's the way I, I read that question. Um, if you were actually asking something more about travel days between, definitely um, let us know that. Um, let's see. I'm actually glad, Susan, that you mentioned St. Michael's because if you have not heard, AGLCA is having a looper crawl and docktails in St. Michael's on May 26th. So all members are welcome. You can come by car and visit the other members' boats who may be tied up there, or you can come by boat and choose to open your boat to others to tour or not to do that. Um, it's mostly a social undertaking. We know we are competing against a very popular event. Um, there is a precision flying team some of you may have heard of called the Blue Angels that is also going to be on the Chesapeake that day over in Annapolis. So we know we've got some competition going on there. But we already have several boats registered, and we're hoping that some of you will come join us. So just wanted to give a little shout out on that. So as Susan said, you can spend a few days in St. Michael's, and, and why not make that during the AGLCA Looper Crawl there? So we we'll hope to see a lot of you 
They are just shortly after the virtual spring rendezvous wraps up. Um, next question is certainly going to be uh, subject to your personal opinion, but the question is, would reading James Mishner's Chesapeake be worthwhile? Absolutely, absolutely. That that was one of the, um, the earliest books that I read about the Chesapeake um, that got me very interested in the area, and that was before I, I met Foster. Um, so I would I would read it. I mean, obviously it's dated material, so um, you're not going to find present day things that are applicable. But the, the history of the area is just so rich, um, and the the wildlife and the um, uh, the landscape features. Uh, it just it's a really good book to read. Excellent. Thank I you. Had to pick a second book. I would pick Beautiful Swimmers. It's about the life of the blue crab and about how they grow and do all this stuff, but also the industry around that. And since the Chesapeake is basically blue crab country, it's a pretty cool read. Excellent, thank you for those recommendations. Next question, what is the end of the season on the Chesapeake? We've kind of talked about the beginning, but what's the latest you really wanna be on the bay? Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's about the latest we've actually voted, like taking the boat out. And we have uh, served Thanksgiving dinner a couple of times on the boat. Okay. Um, so also kind of, I'm going to, I'm jumping around a little bit to kind of group some similar questions. Um, also related to timing questions. If you were to buy a boat on the Chesapeake, um, what's the latest date you'd leave to start your loop from there and not feel kind of behind the pace? and rush. So I'm assuming that uh, this is from Seth and he, I'm assuming he's talking about kind of the one year seasonal time frame to do the loop where a lot of loopers are coming onto the Chesapeake now um, and over the next month or two. So any thoughts on, you know, what's the latest you would want to leave the Chesapeake End of June? to continue on the loop? So that's a hard question. Is Canada yeah. open? Yeah. And Seth, maybe you can tell us if you're talking about this year or perhaps a different year, but it is going to depend somewhat on whether you plan to do Canada and how long you plan to spend there. Although I'm told by people who have done both the Trent Severn into Georgian Bay and people who have done the Lake Erie route, that's going to be the way most likely for this year. It's basically the same amount of time that it takes most people. Um, it's it, depending of course, on how long you choose to stop in certain places and how many days you choose to spend exploring. I know Foster and Susan are huge fans of Canada, so they probably spent more time there than many. Um, but I've had several loopers tell me it was, the, have, who have done both say it was the same amount of time for them, regardless of which way they went. But so let's assume um, it's this year and Canada is not currently, the border is still closed. Um, any, any guess as to what the latest to leave the Chesapeake might be? So you have to be off of Lake Michigan by Labor Day. Well, no, we, we <laughs> agree with you there, Foster, <laughs> that it really can be later than that. So um, you, have to wind, you have to wind backwards from there. I don't know. It's kind of a hard question to answer because I don't know the boat. I could say, oh, you could do that whole trip in 45 days. But if you're on a trawler and you're only on six knots, that's not a, a, you know, a reasonable answer. Um, and yeah, people have different expectations. Some people expect to do like, 40 miles a day and get through it as opposed to, you know, what we did, which was really more like 30 miles a day and only travel three days and then take a couple rest days. Right. So it, it really, you know, it depends on the person and it depends on how much time you want to spend in the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, maybe you've already spent time in the Chesapeake Bay. Like we left in April for our loop um, because you know, we live on the Chesapeake. <laughs> you know. Um, but I mean, maybe like mid June, yeah, if I were I, to guess. I don't know. I, I, he needs whoever whoever asked the question needs to dial back how many days we're going to travel and try to go that way because it really can't say the Chesapeake Bay is open until Thanksgiving. The problem you're going to face is that when you get up towards. Uh, Brian at Shady Harbor, they close earlier. So when you get to SK, that closes earlier. So you kind of have to work up there. When do those places close and then also work your way back? And the other thing is I'm kind of thinking in terms of heat. Like for me, till mid-June would be okay because it wouldn't be overly hot and we'd be moving into cool weather. 
But if somebody's a Florida person, they might really like it to be hot. And if somebody's like a Michigan person, the heat might be overwhelming to them in mid-June. So yeah. also ha- kind of have to take those things into consideration. Yeah, and, and this um, this was Seth who asked the question and he did respond that he's talking about next year. So, I mean, Seth, if we assume that you want to go to Canada, um, you know, Foster and Susan are right that you probably need to work backwards from the idea that you're not going to want to be on Lake Michigan, you know, most likely in October because it's cold and the weather, is, you know, the, the conditions on Lake Michigan get worse and worse as we go through fall. So you kind of need to work backwards from there and think about how much time you might like to spend in the different parts of Canada. If big cities are your thing, you may not want to spend a whole lot of time in Canada at all because a lot of it is very rural. But if you're a sportsman and enjoy nature and fishing and hiking, you're probably going to want to spend a lot of time in Canada. The last part of your question was about feeling rushed or behind. Um, You know, I would encourage you not to feel rushed. There's plenty of time. Um, If the question about feeling behind has to do with your own personal nature of being social in nature and wanting to be traveling with other loopers, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, Seth, you're a family who's going to be looping and if being you know, kind of in the thick of things, so maybe there's other children is important. I would say it's pretty typical for loopers to cross into Canada from Lake Ontario around July 1st. Mm. Um, So if you're, you're, like I said, that doesn't mean you have to cross in by July 1st, but if you want to be in the middle of the pack and have lots of company out there, that's probably something you should be shooting for. Um, So I think maybe that'll help a lot. Um, a lot of the events that happen around the loop for loopers are timed around when loopers would likely be there, like our rendezvous. That's why we would be in Norfolk around this time of year. Um, so Brian Donovan at Shady Harbor has his pig roast, and I believe this year it's June 15th, if I'm not mistaken. So he does that in mid-June because that's kind of typical time frame for loopers to be coming through. So hopefully that helps. That was kind of a long-winded answer to your question, but hopefully it's a little bit helpful. Um, Dale asked if you could please repeat the book name. So I know one was uh, James Missioner's Chesapeake and the other Foster was? It's Beautiful Swimmers. And I don't remember the author the author name of that. Okay, but, Beautiful Swimmers is the other yeah, one about the blue it's, crabs. It's about crabs. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, can you address the switching of the nav aids on the c and canal? Switching Might need a little bit more information yeah. on that, David, yeah. you asked that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So when you're going up the C&D, the red is going to be on the port side and the green is going to be that. And then when you come down, it's it does slip in Delaware City. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry because I just, because first nature, I always go, that's how that works. Sorry. Okay, yeah, and there are several places along the route where the they are going to switch. So that is something you need to be cognizant of in lots of places. Um, next question I'm going to answer with a yes, <laughs> but Foster will elaborate. The question is um, from Ron, should we expect some no travel days due to weather like you would have on Lake Michigan? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there will be many... Many, many, many new travel days. Mm-hmm. In fact, I hear from lots of loopers who tell me the worst travel days they encountered were on um, Delaware Bay or, um, you know, and perhaps because it's more unexpected. But yeah, you absolutely can expect to have days where you stay put in this area for sure. And that's why that's why Foster has become such a weather guru about this area with helping other loopers know when those days to stay put might be. So the bottom part of the Chesapeake Bay is where you're going to find your worst weather days. And then the entirety of the Delaware Bay, you're going to do it in one shot because it's only 50 miles to do that. And you're going to pick your weather day. And if you get closer, we can help you with that. Or like Susan said, if you go to Tim's briefing, he'll get you through that too to go do that. But the the weather on the Chesapeake can pretty be pretty nasty. Yeah. Talking a little bit more about the weather, but not so much the, the sea conditions, but the air temperature. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the heat? When is it typically oppressive on the Chesapeake? Which which July. of the months is there a specific season that is the worst of the worst? Yeah, July is really when it starts to be very hot. And uh, interestingly, lately, August has been a little less hot 
and then it'll get hot again in September. Yeah. But July is really the worst month. Okay. Um, and then another question, uh, this is from a different viewer. This one is from Karen. Um, if you did spend the month of July on the Bay, are the Northern ports significantly cooler and more comfortable than the Southern or is the whole Bay oppressive during that time of year? It is, it is cooler up there because there's more yeah. woods. Right. Yeah. And when you get, when you get any kind of like a uh, breeze with trees, uh, near the water, it's going to be cooler than it is uh, farther south where the, the cities are. Okay. Um, next question is, what is your primary anchor type? So I'm going to expand upon that to tell us a little bit. Um, I think you told us in the beginning, but about just remind everyone what boat you have because the anchor type and, and is there a specific type of anchor that is popular on the Chesapeake versus, you know, some of the other bottoms that you'll find along the Great, Great Loop Route? Okay, so we have a 45 foot bay liner that weighs about 3,400 pounds. Um, the, it's got a Danford anchor on the front of it with 200 feet of chain. The, the bay is basically silty muck mm -hmm. the, entire, the entire length. So if you've got something to do silty muck, you'll be fine. Your normal anchor that you've got is gonna be great. Um, people have said that Anchors for rocks don't do well in the bay, but everything else we've done, we've been fine with. Okay. Um, and if, if memory serves me correctly, this may be a Susan question because it, I could be completely wrong, but I seem to remember Susan was the person who fished more than Foster on the loop. Am I right about that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the question is what types of fish and easiest methods to catch in the Northern Chesapeake? Oh, bass. You're going to be going for bass. Um, and catfish. So pretty much any kind of a, a, a rig that you buy at um, Dick's Sporting Goods or REI or, you know, a cheap fishing rod. <laughs> you don't need anything special. Right. Um, and uh, you can use live bait. Um, there's plenty of bait stores around. Uh, we use a lot of night crawlers. Um, you can use lures, spinners, um, but I mean, I've, I, I'm not very successful with bass with spinners here. I was very successful with bass with spinners in Canada, but not here. And, and it may have been the time of day that I was out. I've had a lot more luck with, with live bait here, but you can always catch catfish. There's lots of catfish. Just don't eat them. <laughs> okay. Um, back to anchoring for a second. Uh, can you anchor out and take the dinghy to Tangier Island? It's too far. Yeah. Don't. So Dave Fuller did chime in on this one while you two were still presenting. Okay. Um, so if you're not familiar with that particular, um, his, his advice was that it was a little shallow up to, you know, all the way out a half mile from the yeah. island, probably less than three feet. So um, better to stop in uh, Onancock and get a, the tour boat. So um, yes. that pretty much match your experiences there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. And the last question that we have, mm -hmm. um, this is coming from an anonymous attendee, but I suspect it's one of Foster's friends. Is there any place that we can get a decent butter tart? <laughs> no, there isn't. <laughs> yes, there is, because I have had them, because Susan makes butter tarts, and she brought me some <laughs> ones. <laughs> Who's that mean to me? Mike. Mike. No, it's Mike. <laughs> yes. O'Malley. Mike O'Malley. We should know. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Susan uh, makes awesome butter tarts. You can stop by here and get a butter tart. Susan does make awesome butter tarts because <laughs> I um not to be transporting though. They're not just laying around. I gotta make them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and I, I do remember um Foster and Susan when I met you at Annie's for the cream of crab soup, which was fabulous, and you brought me some butter tarts. So all these recommendations are wonderful. <laughs> I've experienced them myself thanks to um their hospitality. So thank you both for that. We are actually right on time for our break, which we had scheduled for 7.45. It is now 7.44, so I'll call that right on time. Right. Um, we are gonna take a 10 minute break. Um, we will come back at 7.55. We'll start with some door prizes when we come back. You will use the exact same Zoom link you used to get here now. It's not like Tuesday where you had to log off and sign back in to get to the small groups. So you don't even have to disconnect. Um, you can walk away from the computer for 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.55. Foster and Susan are going to pick up where they left off and take us on up to New York City. And from there, Dave and Claudia Fuller will pick up and take us to Waterford. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes. We'll see you then. <laughs> 